Good evening, everybody, and welcome to your favourite place on a Sunday night, Virtual Church here on Beauty and Sound. We have an awesome lineup. I'm just um, I'm just lining up my light. It's a bit wonky. We have an awesome lineup tonight for you. Um, it goes without saying that we have a, a really eclectic uh, mixture of hymns tonight, mainly focusing on the season of Lent, um, and we'll also have some other things as well. So we are in Lent 2023 already, and we're going to start tonight's virtual church with one of the great Lenten hymns. It can only be 40 days and 40 nights. Thou wast fasting in the wild. This, is, this tells a story, actually, if you follow the words through um, of Jesus fasting for those 40 days. Um, and finally, in verse 6, it says, that with thee we may appear at the eternal Easter tide. So it's a full journey. This was requested by James Mossop. And it's an opportunity for me to explore quite a lot of colours on this wonderful organ of Rotterdam. Bright colours to um, depict the, the joy and the um, um, uh, sunbeams. And then, of course, we have Satan, prowling beasts, and everything else. Here we go. Do, do say hello. Do, do, do give me a plus one, your location, and all of that jazz. with thee we may appear at the eternal Easter tide. One of the hymns where, in my view, a T.S. to Picardy is, is forgiven, because I don't often like them, as you know, but I think with words like that, you have to end on a happy note. D major is a happy note. So, lots of hymns to get through tonight. We have a top five as well to get through, which has been sent in by one of your good selves. This, this, uh, today's top five comes in from Harry, who goes by the username of ELR Transport. 
the great username. Might give you a little bit of a clue as to what Harry is into in his spare time. <laughs> um, but meanwhile, before we get there, we have 10 hymns. We just had one. The next hymn we're going to have tonight is How Deep the Father's Love for Us. Now, this is a request from no other than me. I recorded this hymn with my old church choir. It's in a compilation of Lenten hymns. Um, and it was, they didn't know it to begin with. Because it, was it wasn't a well-known tune um, in, that, in the parish. Um, but it became very well-known. Um, you know, we, we rehearsed it and then sang it in the church a few times. But it was, it was fun to get to know it together. And it is it's a very nice hymn. How deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure, that he should give, a, that, that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure. Uh, the words and the music are both by Stuart Townend. Yeah, we are in high res tonight. So often people ask me um, if I can send them my, this hymnal on the, on, from the iPad that I use. And I can't because a lot of these hymns are in copyright. So I, I can't send them out. And someone said that they could see the, the copyright watermark. Well, of course, it, it obviously isn't copyright. So alas, that's why I can't send it out to people. 
but yeah, high quality. And have you noticed my zooms? I hope the um, keen-eyed amongst you have noticed my zooms. You would not believe how hard setting up a very simple zoom like that was. Oh, often the most simple things to look at and things that you don't even notice are the hardest things to get right. You only notice them when they go wrong. And last night in the organ recital given by Ben Bloor, it was the first time that I ever used zooms in a live broadcast on beauty and sound. And I think I was more nervous than Ben actually because I was having to make sure the stream was working, the zooms were working, and I had to put on a face of calm. But inside, I was really feeling it. Next hymn tonight is one of my favourites, a wonderful hymn for Advent, uh, Advent, at Lent. It's Dear Lord and Father of Mankind, to the wonderful tune by Charles Hubert Hastings Parry, and the tune is called Repton. Uh, final verse, speak through the earthquake, wind and fire. O still small voice of calm, O still small voice of calm. One of the great hymns, this, so let's do it justice.
very still, small voice of calm. Wonderful hymn there by, uh, by uh, John Whittier, the words. Music by Charles Parry of the I Was Glad fame. It's really um, exciting tonight in here because we have a, the, um, the door is shut to this room. And whenever I play the low E, low e flat, let's see if you can hear this. Listen. <laughs> so th this is like being in a real church where you have a, a note w which um, rattles the choir stalls. <laughs> we have a note rattling that door. It sounds very authentic. Brady Kilman is up next with a request. Um, which isn't, this is not a, specifically a Lenten hymn, but it is a good hymn nonetheless. And it is, Great is thy faithfulness, O God of my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Now, Brady, you were a little bit premature with your second request, my friend. You requested something which we can put in the backlog, so make sure you request it again, but perhaps request it on Easter Day talking about Christ is risen. We're not quite there yet in terms of the liturgical journey that we're going through, uh, through, through Lent, Passion Tide, Holy Week, and then Easter. So make sure you get it in on Easter day, because that is a corker. Great as thy faithfulness is another corker. <laughs> uh, and I'm just gonna take the edge off the tempo a little bit, because I actually now, now I've played this hymn quite a few times both here for you guys and in the real world, I actually prefer to have this at a slightly more sedate tempo. So, Lenten question for you, you organists in the, in the, um, in the live chat tonight. What have you done for Lent in terms of what have you changed at your church? Some churches, some organists play Bach um, for, um, for, as every voluntary. Uh, some organists don't use a pedal reeds. Some organists don't use a tubers or shamards. Let me know what you've done differently this Lent to mark that season of Lent. Okay, so great is thy faithfulness for Brady Kilman.
What did you think of the tempo? I think I should tell you more frequently when I'm going to change the tempo before I play something because it's actually good to get your feedback on that. And sometimes I think you think I've gone absolutely mad when I play something at a very strange speed. But some nine times out of ten, I would say that the tempos that I choose are are conscious choices. Sometimes I, as you know, I get it completely wrong, and I have to sometimes even start again and, and apologise. But I, I, I remember the reason I do it that speed. Let me just tell you very quickly. The reason I do it that speed was one occasion I was conducting my um, my chamber choir, Consort SW1, in Chichester Cathedral. Uh, it was Sunday morning, and that was the hymn. And the organist who we uh, were using on that occasion was brought up as a Methodist, actually. And he, um, I, I've always sort of done it. Sort of a bit more upbeat, but he, he actually played it slowly and more weighted, dignified, very intentionally. And it really worked. And there was one person in the congregation who was really particularly, particularly um, singing it with much heart and passion. And he was really, really enjoying it. And you could tell that he was not just singing it because it's just the next hymn, but he was really singing it. And it was just, it just seemed right at that speed. And I, I suspect that the tempo that the organist chose really encouraged that heartfelt performance by that one individual singer. I'll never forget that. And that's the reason why I've taken that particular hymn at a slower tempo. The next hymn um, came in from, and I must apologize, I didn't write down the name on my sheet. I do hope that you are in, and I do hope that you'll remember that you requested this. The glory, um, the glory of these 40 days Obviously, another one, another great one uh, for uh, for Lent. Glory of these forty days, we celebrate with songs of praise for Christ, by whom all things were made. Himself has fasted and has praised. Prayed. Uh, the tune is called "Er halt uns Herr," um, and it's been harmonised by the great man J. S. Bach. And this one might also be a little bit slower because there are a lot of passing notes in the harmony, which suggests that Bach had in mind a slower, more dignified tempo. We're too slow, but it will be just a little bit slower than you might think. So if you're in the chat and you requested this, I apologize for not writing down the tune, uh, but let everyone know who it was.
Tristan. Yes, indeed it was. Of course it was. You requested it only recently. And I don't know why, but that your name didn't get copy and pasted into my table. Apologies. Tristan, thank you very much uh, for requesting it. Um, the glory of these 40 days. Making good progress already. Five really good hymns. Now we're going to have a... Uh, you probably might forget or it might not work, but I'm going to try something tonight. I want to try, at the very end of VC, I want to ask you to vote for your f most favourite hymn of the whole broadcast. So that means you've got to stick around, basically. If there's a particular hymn that I, I play particularly well, or one that you really want to hear again for whatever reason, we'll have a vote at the end. Hopefully one of our producers, by the way, who is uh, Josh Wilson tonight officially, um, uh, who's keeping an eye on things, he'll keep an eye out. And anyway, that, that's to come later after our top five. And last thing, if you want to make a live request, you can by just by leaving a super chat in the chat, just as uh, Nick Knack and Carmen Foster have done already. Thank you very much, guys, for your requests. And we'll get to the live requests uh, later on um, in the show, after, after the top five. Virtual Church is what it is thanks to you. So the more you get involved, the more you say, the better hymns you request, the more fun we have. The next hymn, which is our sixth hymn, is um, comes in from Carmen. I can see Carmen chatting away. Uh, he's just said, I'm a bass chick too, loved it. You know when you walk in um, just at the wrong time uh, in a co on a conversation and you have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, that. <laughs> Carmen has requested a hymn which is normally sung actually in the season of Advent. But if you think about the words, it could be, and it is, I think, um, very relevant for the season of Lent. Let me just tell you what it is. Listen to these words. Come, thou Redeemer of the earth, and manifest thy virgin birth. Let every age adorning fall, such birth befits the God of all. So come, Redeemer of the earth, I think is... Is, is, is appropriate for Lent, for the season of waiting and watching and anticipating. <clears throat> that is obviously synonymous with Advent as well, which you are, where you are waiting, watching, um, anticipating for the birth of Christ. But in Lent, we are waiting and we're watching um, to see, you know, the great story of Jesus on the cross and then God. All of that sort of stuff, I'm not, I'm not going to go into that today, but all of that sort of watching and waiting is very, is very relevant, actually. I was, I was told <coughs> when I was organist at Winchester that this had to be played in three in a bar. Definitely three in a bar, not one in a bar. So, I've actually got some quite weighty, weighty hymns tonight, which is great. That's great. What should we have? Let's have some mutations up on the top division. Which we haven't yet had. We probably have, but I can't remember. I'll put on for this one for a little bit at least the stops screen, so you can see um, what stops I'm using. I know some of you like that. Okay, here we go.
and you could see the lonely Gadact upon the top manual there. <laughs> I actually had that on at one point with the octave, so on, on the top division. So this is, that's the eight, this is the A foot by itself. And then with the octaves up and down. It adds quite a bit of weight. What a lovely hymn. Thank you very much, Carmen, for requesting that. It's good to see so many of you in the chat with me tonight. Um, uh, over 280 of you. It's good to have uh, much uh, good company. It really is um, very humbling to have you all here. And I do really appreciate your company. So thank you for being here. Benjamin Yao is up next, who sent me a high quality scan. And it is Love Divine, So Great and Wondrous. Ah, not Love Divine, you know what, excelling. Love Divine, So Great and Wondrous, Deep and Mighty, Pure Sublime, Coming from the Heart of Jesus, Just the Same, Through Tests of Time. And then the refrain is, He, the pearly gates, will open, so that I may enter in, for he purchased my redemption and forgave me all my sin. The tune here is called Pearly Gates. And the music is by Elsie um, Alwyn. And Benjamin says, um, he um, sang a hymn which, he, Benjamin sang a hymn which used this tune and thought of sharing it with the community here. Um, there we go, yes. So he sang it and he's thought he'd share it. That's one of the wonderful things. Um, and actually, when people make requests, it's often because they've just sung it or heard it being performed somewhere and they want me to play it and they want to hear it again and they want to share it with the community. So that's, that's a really great example of, of someone hearing and experiencing a hymn in their own church and thinking, I know someone who'll like that. The BIS community, a worldwide community. So let's see what it's like. I don't know it because it wasn't in my library prior to today or whenever it was that Benjamin sent the email through. But let's explore it. So let's start with a couple of mutations down on the lower division to sell about the tune so we can get used to the tune. Um, there were four verses and actually it's, it's very short, this. Let me see, if it, let me see about this tempo. Quite a lot of rhythms, you see. Okay, I think I've got a tempo in my head. If it's wrong, you'll have to let me know. So, here goes nothing, guys.
well, at least one of you has just said that the timing is just right. So, Jeremy, thank you. That's quite reassuring to hear um, <laughs> because that was the first time. The thing is with that one, there's a lot of rhythms. So, you've got these dotted rhythms. Okay. But then after all of those rhythms, you then have some long notes. Long note, long note, and then another long note here. So that's on occasions like that when you have fast notes followed by slow notes, it's difficult to get the tempo right. That's when you really have to think about what the tempo should be and sing the words in your head. So this is as important as an organist, actually. If you're watching and you play hymns, it's really important to sing the words through in your head. Go to the fastest points of the hymn, the fastest rhythms in the hymn, the fastest notes. Are the congregation going to trip over the words if you play those, those rhythms too quickly? Are they going to run out of breath if the phrase is too long? So you have to look at the fast notes and then also the slow notes, and how long the lines are as well. Don't make it impossibly hard for them. That's the art of a good organist, to get the tempo right. And then, of course, once you've got the tempo right, guys, it's really important to make sure that you keep a consistent tempo. Nothing drives me pottier, <laughs> an English word, uh, than hearing a play over played um, an introduction played to him at a certain tempo and then come in with the choir or the congregation and it just change. The whole point of a playover, a little bit of a hobby horse here now, I'll come down in a, a few seconds, make sure the playover is the same tempo as the verse, all right? Don't rush through the, 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 the introduction. It has to be quite metronomic and then the congregation know where they stand and they can come in at the right tempo. Off the hobby horse, back into virtual church. Just a top tip for you guys. It's free, it's a free tip, have it. <laughs> Daniel Kibaki is up next with a hymn um, called Bless Now, O God, The Journey. Uh, to the tune, Hlangoflan. Uh, Hlangoflan, uh, so the Welsh. Um, uh, uh, town, I think, but maybe it's not. It is. I'm sure it is. I just think it, actually on on there it looks like it's spelled differently than the town I'm thinking of. The town in Wales with the old railway. Anyway, um, bless now, O God, the journey that all your people uh, make, your path through noise and silence, the way of give and take. The trail is found in desert and winds the mountain around. It should be winds the mountain around. Then leads beside the waters the road where faith is found. And Daniel has just said in the chat that he found it this week. And, it, and in my table he says, whoa, this is a strong tune. Excellent. I love uh, That's good. Um, Characterful writing there, Dan. Pull a, pull a lot of stops. <laughs> Any particular ones? Uh, if you can't play... Oh, yeah, he goes on to say something else, which is not relevant to this hymn. Um, so, bless now, O God, the journey. And he says, to pull a lot of stops. But I will. Just for you, Dan. A Danny boy. Okay, here we go.
So thank you very much, Daniel, for requesting that one. Good tune. A couple more hymns to go, and then we will have our top five. Our top five hymns. It's going to take a little bit of a deviation um, for a minute from Lent. And we're going to have a request from Alan, Alan Matthew, actually, who requested this hymn last week. But I, th I suspect what happened, Alan, is you requested it after I, I had printed the weekly hymns. Because I saw it in the BIS request form today. And I thought, I don't remember seeing that last week. So we'll have it, we'll have it today for you. Um, oh. and actually, it's not in my hymn, it's not in my iPad. So I just need to go and get my hymn book, my actual paper hymn book. Very old fashioned. I can't quite remember what number it is, unfortunately, without looking in the index. But I can tell you what it is. It's angel voices ever singing round thy throne of light. Angel voices, it's called the tune. Um, music is by E.G. Monk and the words are by Francis Pott. And I'm going to use a trumpet on the grate to begin with. I'm sure you were dying to know that. I'm sure you could have worked it out. So you guys are clever. You know, you know your stuff. Angel voices ever singing round thy throne of light.
angel voices ever singing round thy throne of light. I saw at least one person say, um, oh, it was Joshua Walker, amazing pipe organist, and Rev. Jonathan. Um, that's a long name, isn't it? But it's rather good. So um, if you click on um, their YouTube channel, Joshua Walker, I forget how old young Josh is, but he's a very talented young organist and plays very nicely. So go and check him out on the channel. There's a bit of a running joke in the film community when you have a star in a film or a list of stars and then at the very end you have an and um, um, and someone. But then if, if it's if it's a list of stars and then someone else who isn't quite up to the standard, it's you know, it's X, Y, Z, but why? <laughs> but I'm I'm glad to see that you put and Rev Jonathan, so both equals. Final hymn now in our um, in our pre-requested hymns before we go into into our top five, which comes in from Harry. Are you in with us tonight, ELR? Train Spotter, uh, let us know if you're in. I hope you are because this is your list. It's a wonderful list. These are all hymns, um, hymns that you'll all know, all of them, um, and it's really quite spectacular. So be before there, before we get to that, we'll have another hymn, a really, really good hymn, and then we'll have a very cheeky organ piece, um, a bit of a deviation, but it's a request and then we'll go into the top five, before then going into the live requests. It's good to see over 300 of you, so I'm very grateful for your company. I think now would be a good time uh, for you to let me know who's in the chat. So, plus one, your location, let me know who's in. Plus one, Hampshire, UK. <coughs> oh, excuse me. A bit of a cough.
and welcome to um, uh, uh, Todd Anton. Thank you very much for joining BIS as a channel member. Very grateful for your membership. Welcome to JS Bark. You now have access to all of those really cool emojis, one of which is, of course, Bach. So let's just have now a very uh, little organ piece uh, before we go into our top five. And as we are on the incredible organ of uh, Rotterdam, it would be nice to have some JS Bach, wouldn't it? So last night, um, Ben Bloor gave you some uh, Dietrich Buxtehude, but let's have some Bach. I'm just trying to find the one. Oh, there it is. Wenn wir in Houston Newton sein. Um, whenever we are in the greatest distress. This comes from the Ogel Buch line. It's BWV 641. Um, I'm just going to have qu um, choir, choir eight and four mutation, uh, two foot and the one and one third as well. Why not? Followed by Gedact upon the solo. In fact, I can put this stops on the screen, can't I? Um, No, the microphone isn't still open on that screen. Oh well. Uh, flutes on the swell, on the great. Which is just, just the flutes on the solo and the swell combined like that. Maybe the, the viol de gamba on the swell as well, perhaps. Mm, that's nice. And then there's just the um, 16 and 8 on the um, pedal. So this is, yes, um, Wenn wir in Houston, this is my awful German pronunciation, I'm just trying to work it out as I go through here, um, Houston Newton Sein. Here we go. Isn't that really beautiful? So that was from the Olga Buchlein um, by Bach. 
uh, BWV641. Great. Well, that now takes us into my favourite part of Virtual Church. The, and the next section of Virtual Church is completely narrated by one of you now. So I just, I basically, ha I have a script. <laughs> I'm actually told what to say. So, yay, I can switch off my brain and hand over to Harry. Harry E-L-R train spotter. <laughs> Bit of a clue in the username there as to what Harry might be up to in his spare time. Starts at number five and counts down all the way to number one. As I, as I, as I mentioned earlier on, these are hymns that all of you will know. I guarantee all of you will know these hymns, so you better stick around for all five of these because they are really good. And I would say they get better and better and better. Number one is absolutely catastrophically good. <laughs> and this organ does all of these hymns really well. So let me just find, let me just um, line up the first one and then we'll get cracking. Good evening all. You may not recognize the name ELR Transporter, Train Spotter. I regularly watch, but I don't comment too regularly. Hopefully though, you'll recognize my name. I always enjoy looking at other people's top fives. However, having only a limited hymn knowledge, um, quite good in my opinion, but VC regularly makes me think otherwise. Hopefully my top five should be well known. Popular bangers to use a modern phrase. So he starts at number five. I worship the king in the beauty of holiness. Oh, hang on. I just need to make sure that I play the right tune here. Hang on, a, a very quick jiffy. Once I get the right tune. There it is. I worship the king, all glorious above. Oh, gratefully sing God's power and love. Our shield and defender, the ancient of days, pavilioned in splendor and girded with praise. This is a gorgeous hymn that I've only recently fallen in love with. Hard to choose just one set of words to go with this hymn, as it can be sung to Dispose of Supreme and Judge of the Earth, and The Kingdom of God is Justice and Joy, amongst others. Glorious. Uh, it's a glorious, resplendent tune with fabulous harmonies and a really triumphant feel. What isn't to love?
that could have gone so wrong. Luckily, she was on best behavior. Weren't you, Bobby? You're going to stay there. If you stay there, I'm very happy for you to be on the bench. If you get any closer to, closer to those keys, we'll have to have a word. Number four in, in Harry's list. We have a gospel to proclaim to the tune Fulda. And he says, another grand hymn on my list. One that for me sums up the entire point of why we do this whole Christianity business. Six verses with every verse individually telling part of Jesus' story and summarizing the faith with the most wonderful words. The tune is fantastic and again, grand and pompous. Such a lovely hymn. We have a gospel to proclaim.
Karl Imposter just says, whoa, Richard, I have more respect for Rotterdam. This organ needs to be treated with respect because there is so much to it. Um, Bobby, what are you doing? What are you scratching? Don't scratch that chair. Don't scratch that chair, that's not allowed. I have added a stop. Listen to this, if I pull out this trumpet, and pull out this stop, it's giving me a subactive to all of the shamards, and that can create a racket, I tell you. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I didn't think of that earlier, actually, but that, that was a recent addition. Um, yes, anyway, so number three, that was number four in uh, Harry's list. Number three um, can be sung to two tunes, uh, both of which I think are fantastic. Um, but Harry has chosen Abbott's Lay. Glorious things of thee are spoken. The other tune, of course, is Austria, which I think is a very, very powerful tune. On to a hymn that, certainly in my experiences, causes a bit of debate. Should it be sung to Abbot's Lay or Austria? I didn't even see that. So, I, I, Harry, I apologise for um, um, preempting what you just wrote. I personally um, fall on the Abbot's Lay side of the scale for the slow, there's a clue there, uh, grand feel it has to the hymn. It also has sentimental meaning for me. Uh, the first hymn that I ever learned to harmony for. So for me, this uh, hymn reminds me of becoming a bass. It's interesting. It actually does have a very good bass line. The uh, tune is by um, Cyril Taylor, um, and the words are by John Newton. Glorious things of the are spoken, Zion, city of our God. He whose word cannot be broken, formed for thee, formed thee for his own abode. On the rock of ages founded, what can shake thy sure repose? With salvation's walls surrounded, thou mayest smile at all thy foes. Okay, sounds good, doesn't it? So, um, Harry mentioned in his sentence, in his paragraph, uh, he likes us him because of the slow, grand feel it has. So let's do that for Harry, a slow and grand. That can be our Lenten thing. Now I asked you earlier, what are you organists doing differently for Lent? What are, are you not using the reeds? Are you playing bark as voluntaries? This can be the BIS thing. We can take things slower. We can take things in a more grandier manner. Let's try this one in a, in a grand manner, shall we? See if it works. I just have to apologise there because <laughs> I completely lost my uh, train of thought. <laughs> and, and John Hosking, I'm looking at you. You just said in the chat, you used a single eight foot, uh, eight foot flute once today. <laughs> that is my Lent offering. Yes, John, you know, we all know what your middle name is, don't we? And that really tickled me and I, I lost my place. <laughs> so you owe me one.
wonderful hymn there, played at uh, Harry's request in a very grand manner. Can you play something fast in a grand manner? I'm sure you can. When I was at Winchester, it was um, custom uh, not to reharmonize during Lent. Yeah, that is right. It was not no no reharmonizations during Lent. I remember doing one once. Um, I was just trying to think of what the hymn was. It was I think it was "Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus," and um, the director of music came upstairs and said, "No reharmonizations," in no uh, no fewer words, and then walked, they ran back downstairs. Oh dear, I'm in trouble. <laughs> Could have waited to the end. But didn't. Oh well. It was quite a good one actually. I was quite proud of that one. That was number three. Number two in um, in Harry's list is a BIS favourite. Robert, what are you? What are you doing? Have you been naughty? What do you mean trumpet number three? Well, thank you very much for your twenty. That's very kind. But I think I've, I, I miss out on. I miss out on these on your chat because actually the, the, the text for the chat tonight is actually, it's really small, so I can't. You know, I, I find it hard to see what you're saying. But thank you for those people who have been donating. I can see people um, have been donating tonight, so thank you very much. Josh has just told me Robert is donating for each hymn. You have trumpets. Oh crumbs. Okay. Well, it's a good job, Harry, isn't it? That um, the hymns that you requested are all have all got trumpets in them. Number two, Robert, I am very grateful. Thank you so much, my friend. Number uh, number two in Harry's list, before we get to number one, is my number one, I think. I don't know, is it my number one? Not sure. Just remember that I said earlier that at the end of Virtual Church tonight, we're going to have a vote on what your favourite hymn was tonight. So just remember what the hymns were. I'll give you a quick recap of them and we'll have uh, the, the most votes. Like, what's Bobby doing? Oh, making yourself comfortable. <laughs> so, what is it? It's love divine or love's excelling. Joy of heaven to earth come down. Getting slightly more into my sentimental hymns now. This is a hymn that has been sung since, uh, sung to me since, uh, since, since um, a very young age by relatives. A great grandparents wedding hymn that has been passed through the family as a firm favourite. Again, a hymn that can be sung to many sets of words, including the earlier mentioned, glorious things of thee are spoken. However, I prefer God is here and we his people uh, as an alternative set of words to this tune. But sometimes you can't beat the originals. I agree. Love divine, our love's excelling. Joy of heaven to earth come down. Fix in us thy humble dwelling. All thy faithful mercies crown. To a tune, Blind Word by William Rowlands. The alternative, uh, alternative tune is John Stainer, which is called Love Divine. And John, John Stainer, I think he wrote that tune for these words. But unfortunately, John, you've been outdone by William Rowlands, who I think has just pipped you to the um, to the better better tune. Although I should say that John Stainer wrote some really, really fantastic hymns, and I think about which we can all agree. You know, think about the hymns from the crucifixion. All for Jesus, all for Jesus. Come thou long expected Jesus. Those tunes come from the crucifixion that he wrote, and they are fab hymns. Anyway, what should we do with this, Harry? Let's start sensibly. And then, by the time we get to the end, let's, let's just, for a moment, pretend that we're not in Lent. Just for virtual church tonight. Okay, here goes nothing.
So that was number two in Harry's list. Where can we possibly go from there? Well, we're in the same key in, the, in our final hymn. What's the, one of the biggest hymns? Let's see if you can get the answer to this before I play it. What's one of the biggest hymns, biggest sings in the key of G major? G major, one of the biggest hymns. Think about that. Just for a moment, whilst I find it, there it is. Nick Nack, yes, G major. Oh, he's got it. There we go. Come on, Thur. Guide me, O oh thou great redeemer. Golden brownie point to you. Nick Nack, well done. And James as well. James is in there. Thank, wow, thank you very much, Robert. Trumpet 3A and 3B. Trumpet number four. Yeah, well, there's lots of trumpets. Honestly, Robert, you can have as many trumpets as you like. We've got trumpets all over the place in this organ. Um, on the great. On the choir. On the swell. And then on the bombard, of course. Even got them on the pedal. Eight foot and four foot. Any more trumpet stops? Specifically trumpets? There's a trompetta de betala on the um, on the solo. I wonder, what, I wonder what. This is a funny little experiment before we get into Harry's number one. I know this is a bit of a. What do all, the, all those reeds sound like together? octaves. Hmm. Sounds pretty good. What about the um, what about with the shamards then? Crikey, you ready for this? Oh. Heavens above. And then there's the sub octave on the um, shamards now. I'll start with the sentimental bit and then move on to the hymn reason. I'm now talking um, in Harry's voice now. A hymn can recall, and this sounds rather sad, belting at the top of my lung. So this, sorry, this, this is a hymn that Harry can recall, belting at the top of my lungs, having come back into church at, uh, at a younger age from Sunday school. As with anyone who has ever sung this hymn, I'm sure the bit you remember is the evermore sung by the bass at the end of each verse. A gorgeous hymn, the gorgeous tune and gorgeous words. I'm sure you can, or will, see why this is my top hymn. Right, well, yes, so my ears are still ringing from those shamards actually. Um, Sorry. Um, yeah, guide me, O thou great Redeemer, or in some hymn books, guide me, O thou great Jehovah. Pilgrim through this barren land, I am weak, but thou art mighty. Hold me with thy powerful hand. Um, and in, there's a great uh, line, well, not sure, a great line, but a great for word painting, at least in verse 3. When I tread the verge of Jordan, bid my, an bid my anxious fears subside, get rid of them. And then, death of death and hell's destruction. I can, I can think of one stop we ought to use to, um, to word paint hell and destruction. Can't you?
isn't this the the quintessential Welsh hymn? I think it is, to be honest with you. I just imagine um, those wonderful Welsh male voice choirs singing singing the echo on that final um, section of the hymn. Here. That bit. Definitely, 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 yeah. Averisworth is a beautiful tune as well. I heard the voice of Jesus say, no, um, um, oh, no, 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 um, Jesus, Jesus, lover of my soul, sorry. That's a really gorgeous tune as well. Um, that's a Welsh tune. So that brings us to the end of the top five. Uh, thank you very much, Harry, for sending that in. Um, are you in the chat with us? Can someone just let me know whether Harry is in? Um, I'm very grateful, Harry, for that. And we now, we now, I actually need some more top five hymns, by the way. So this is a, a chance for you to come forwards. This is me asking you to send me your top five. So Harry's example um, of writing a short paragraph, a couple of sentences about each hymn, a bit of context, is a perfect example of how to do it. Just right, just the right amount of information, something personal about why he's chosen each hymn. Uh, I now need more top five hymns from you. So if you have uh, uh, some, uh, your, your top, uh, I'll tell you what, how about this? Your top five Lenten hymns. Keep it relevant for the season of Lent. Um, that shouldn't be too hard to do. The four today's and 40 nights will probably be in there. Um, but let's think outside the box a little bit. Are there any um, hymns that we might not have thought of um, that are appropriate for the season of Lent due to their meaning, due to the, the narrative of the story of the hymn. Could we pop that into a Lenten top five? And of course, let's have an Easter top five as well, because before we know it, we'll be at Easter. And of course, let's have a Passion Tide top five. So some ideas there for you. Um, and so I, I look forward to receiving those from you. The best place to send them to is on email. Uh, um, there's a, quite a few email addresses now. But send it to virtualchurch at beautyinsound.co.uk. That comes to me um, and I see all of those and I will um, pick uh, top five next week. So please do send them through. Right, now we go into the live requests. So, Josh, help me out here, my friend. Um, I don't know where Caroline is. I think she must be stuck upstairs with the little man who's um, in bed. I, I can just about see, actually. So, let's have um, Nick Knack. Let's start with you. Um, you, you gave me £10 for me to play uh, in the day of our thanksgiving to the wonderful tune St. Catherine's Court. Well, let me see if it's in here and um, then I'll play that for you. It is! Yes! That's a good start. So thank you very much for <laughs> picking one that's in, uh, on the iPad. In the day, in our day of thanksgiving, one psalm let us offer for the saints who before us received the reward. When the shadow of death fell upon them, we sorrowed, but now we rejoice that they rest in the Lord. Um, music is by Richard Strutt, and the words are by William Henry Draper, and the tune is St. Catherine's Court. So before I do this, I just want to say another uh, thank you to everyone who has been donating tonight. It's very generous. All of your donations are not just being spent on uh, nights out and new clothes and new cars and things like that. They're actually staying in the Beauty, in the Beauty and Sound pot, as it were, and paying for things for you. It develops the channel, it develops the Beauty and Sound thing. So I'm very grateful for your, for your help in that. I was in the Llandaff Cathedral. Some of you would have seen my social media. I was in Llandaff in Wales, recording the organ there. And I was um, doing a little bit of behind the scenes footage. And um, I, I laid out the microphones at one point. I sort of said the microphones I'm using. And at that point, I just realized how 
how none of this would be possible without people um, like yourselves who have been very supportive. So everything that you see on Beauty and Sound, everything that you, you, I'm talking into a camera that's been paid for by Beauty and Sound, cameras all in the room, speakers, the, the organ obviously, the computers, everything has been paid for by, by um, my, my subscribers. And the microphones um, that I've ca captured the organ with in Klandaf were paid for. Um, most of them were actually. Uh, two of them weren't. Uh, two of them weren't. I had them previously. But most of the BIS recording rig has been paid for by you. So I am very grateful to everyone who has donated. No matter how much, whether it's it's 99p, you know, if you are part of the Every Little Helps uh, channel uh, level, I'm very grateful. If you're part of the top tier level, I am very grateful. So no matter how big or no matter how small, I am just very grateful to you. It makes it possible. Yay. So let's now celebrate. Let's celebrate you. Let's celebrate you um, by having this wonderful hymn. Let's, thank, let's give thanksgiving to the support that Beauty and Sound receives on a weekly basis. By the way, I've had this shirt for years. It's probably about 15 years old, this shirt. <laughs> so I don't, I don't buy many new clothes. <laughs> anyway, a bit of a, um, something I probably shouldn't have shared with you. know why I don't have Bobby with me when I'm playing the organ in real life. It's very off-putting making sure the cat doesn't walk on the keyboard and, and playing a hymn and all those flats. You stay here Bobby. I don't think I'll take you to Romsey. I think I now realise that I shan't take you to Romsey because you'll put me off. Yes you will. You stay here. Eee, dear me. 
Right, thank you very much, uh, Nick Knight, for requesting that. Uh, Carmen uh, sent through $20. $20. Take up thy cross, the Saviour said. Yeah, that's a good one, isn't it? Um, I think that's in here. If not, it's definitely in a hymn book that I've got. Um, uh, Josh, are you being really helpful? Am I, am I ignoring you? Uh, uh, Nick, uh, uh, Carmen's request. Common praise 582. There we go. Bobby, I just need to push you off a second, darling. Go on. Nothing personal. I just need to go and get the common praise. And, and you can come back on the, on the um, bench if you like. I'll tell you what, I'm going to grab all of these hymn books. Look, uh, the problem is now I don't know where to put them. Put, put them down there. Put that one over there. And let's go to common praise. It's a number 500. And what was it, Josh? 582. That's really helpful, Josh. Thank you for doing that. 582. Um, hopefully it's the same common praise. It is. Take up the cross. Take up thy cross. The Saviour said, if thou wouldst my disciple be. Actually, I'm just going to... Go to NEH because the the, um, the harmony in NEH is actually better than that. I think it's it's a Mendelssohn harmony. Uh, number seventy six in here. Is that right? Is it seventy? Is it Mendelssohn? I think it's Mendelssohn. Arrange, yeah, arranged by Mendelssohn. So thank you very much, Carmen, for this for your twenty.
fantastic tune and a fantastic um, harmonization there by Bach. It's a better harmony than the, than in common praise. It actually, actually is very um, very safe, very standard, um, very homophonic. But actually, that Mendel that harmony is not one that you see in all the hymn books, surprisingly. But it is it's far better than the than the other version, which uh, was in common praise. We're now going to have an, a request from organist Dan. Dan, are you an organist, or is that just um, an ironic? You know, when someone's called Little John and they're actually massive, or Tall John and they're Diddy. Um, Dan, I assume you're an organist. You've asked for uh, Jerusalem and did those feats in ancient time. Walk upon England's mountains green, a wonderful tune by Parry. There is an arrangement of this, which I must get under the fingers. It's quite fiddly, so I won't play it today. There is an arrangement of this by Joseph Wicks. Joseph Wicks appeared on um, BIS playing the first chorale by César Franck um, last year and he's arranged the orchestral um, part, the harmony essentially for organ and it's very exciting, lots of um, runs and um, uh, flourishes and stuff so I must get that under the fingers and play it to you. Perhaps around after Easter I'll get that and we'll I'll have it online. But so Organ and Stan has requested and did those feats in ancient time. Dan, thank you for requesting that. Let's just um, forget that we're in Lent for a moment, shall we? <laughs> um, now, the next request that came in was from Elizabeth Brown. Now, Elizabeth, I did get your email 
via the shop um, and you've requested something that I don't have right now, I need to find that. So if someone could, well, Elizabeth, if you could send it through on a scan, that would be very useful. Or if someone could send me through um, Christ is Our Light uh, to the tune Highland Cathedral. Um, apparently it's in uh, the Scotland hymnal. So if someone could send that through, then we, uh, then we can actually have it because Elizabeth ask, has asked for it a few times and I keep letting her down by not playing it. So I, I'm very sorry, Elizabeth, for that. Uh, next up is King Loudrup, who's requested, um, um, what have you requested? We sing the praise of him who died. Oh, that's a good tune. Uh, now, where is where do I find that? Ancient and modern. Now, have you... Is it the hymns for refreshing worship? What number is it? Uh, 156. Fingers crossed. It's a good job there's no stops drawn out, it's, <coughs> isn't it, Bobby? Look what's going on here, guys. You know, Nathan Lauber doesn't have to put up with this when he's playing. He doesn't have to put up with cats walking over his, his keyboards. Hey, does he? I do. Can I play the next hymn, please? King Lauderdale has requested a really good hymn, and I found it. We sing the praise of him who died of him upon the cross. The words weren't quite in the right order there. The sinner's hope let man, let man then deride, for this we count the world but loss. To the tune, um, Bow Brick Hill. Can you stay there, please? Okay. And the tune, the tune is by Sidney Hugo Nicholson. I didn't know um, Sidney Nicholson's uh, middle name was Hugo. That's, that's pretty nice. Bobby, I need to play this hymn, okay? I'll feed you afterwards, I promise. I promise. Come on, it's ridiculous. That's it. Thank you. Cats, who'd have them?
can, I should say that, that those fluffs in that one were definitely not me. I can't take the blame for that. That was Bobby walking on the keyboard. Unfortunately, I didn't have the right angle on at the, at the right time, but it was definitely Bobby. That's one, one good thing about having a cat walking over the keys. When you make a fluff, you can say, it was the cat. It's like, oh, the dog ate it. The equivalent of. <laughs> Where's your homework? I did do it, Sarah, I promise, but the dog ate it. Why well, can't you play some right notes in that hymn? I can, I did play right notes in, in that hymn, sir, but the cat walked on the keyboard. Imagine telling someone that. Anyway, Glenn Snyder. Thank you very much for your request. You requested um, Meekness and Majesty, uh, number 440. Oh, the other one's here now. Look, look who's come to join in the fun. <laughs> join in the fun, number 448 in here. Don't worry, but Nala, I won't be long. Just need to pay this one for, for Glenn. And then a voluntary, probably a couple of others as well. Yeah, so I, 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 Josh has uh, told me that um, there's been a lot of good comments about last night's recital. Um, yes, well, I, I, will offer, I will add my own comments to that, that last night's recital. I hope you now realise that, um, I hope your expectations are met in that when I put something on BIS, it's a, it's a quality product. I don't put anything online that I don't think you'll like. If I, if I know, if I think you'll like something, I'll put it on. If it's something that I think you won't like, it won't go on. Last night's recital very much falls into the, I know you will like this category. So if you're at any point this week, if you're working or you're just doing something around the house or you're going for a run or a walk, you get YouTube on your phone, Click last night's live video, put your headphones in, and just put the video, uh, put the phone in your pocket, and just listen to it. Ben's playing was really, really magnificent. I promise you, this is not; these are not just words to make you click the video. These are truth. He played um, Buxtehude, Schwelink, a piece uh, by Francis Poulenc, which I'd never heard before. It's an arrangement of an orchestral um, suite, uh, which Poulenc originally wrote as a ballet, and it works astonishingly well on the organ. So Francis Poulenc, for those of you who don't know, was a, a French composer who was on the scene in the mid 20th century, um, writing for all sorts of instruments, chamber music, choral music, no organ music, apart from an organ concerto, which Maurice Drouflet transcribed for him. And that's a really, really terrific piece of music. If you haven't heard that, that's well worth checking out. He wasn't an organist, and therefore didn't write a, a, um, a music for the organ. In fact, most of his life, he was um, rather um, he was rather atheist, and he actually came to Christianity, um, the Catholic Church at least in France, uh, later on in life, and they, he had literally had an epiphany. I mean was a very devout Catholic later in his life, and then wrote a lot of beautiful choral music, motets, um, and, and um, a mass in G. And he wrote this ballet um, called Les Biches, I think, B-I-C-H-S. Um, and it's five movements, and it's, it's, it has some, something for everyone. It has jazzy feelings, it has rhythms, it has, there's a, the, the final movement is like a handle pastiche um, movement. It has something for everyone in there. And then he plays um, a piece by Vidor, well, you can't go wrong with Vidor, it's, a, it's one of the quieter andante uh, cantabile movements from uh, Symphony Number no. 4. Gorgeous, really pl played really, really well. And then the final piece he plays is a piece by Ian Farrington, called Live Wire, and it's so Live Wire, just imagine, I think it even has a, an exclamation mark at the end of it, and it's just so full of energy. It really is full of energy, and it's, it's one of the best organ pieces that I've heard 
um, in a very long time. I didn't know it, and it's a, I think it's the best p new piece of organ music for me that I've heard in years. It's well worth checking out, and then he ends with a very quiet encore. Please check it out. I'm not just saying it. I, I, I know you'll like it. It's fab. And leave me a comment just to say yeah, what you thought. Um, but you'll be very, very surprised. Very surprised. So anyway, that was, that was our plug for last night. Uh, uh, a hymn, uh, I think this might be our final hymn actually tonight. Um, in fact, no, I'm going to play one more hymn after this. A very special hymn for a very special person. Uh, so, meekness and majesty, manhood and deity, in perfect harmony, the man who is God, has been requested by uh, Glenn, and its uh, music and words are both by Graham Kendrick. Right, so we're going to have one more hymn, and then I'm going to go straight into uh, the voluntary tonight, which is going to be a big um, a prelude. I don't know whether I'll go into the fugue or not yet. Hmm. See how brave I am. But there's going to be a Bach, a, a, a Lenten 
Bach, big uh, prelude, uh, Fantasia and Fugue perhaps. I'll play this hymn first though, um, and this is a, a hymn for a very special person, a person in our uh, community um, who has been very helpful, very generous, um, sends me, we, we, we keep in touch uh, via email, and he's been a great support. And I won't mention your name, um, but needless to say that when I was in Llandaff um, the other day, I may have played this hymn on that organ for you. So I know how much you like it, and you've asked me for a recording of it. So I'll play it for you now live. This is a draw us in the spirit's tether, for when humbly in your name two or three are met together, you are in the midst of them. And then the naughty word here, this is where we shouldn't be, we should change the word. Alleluia, alleluia. In fact, we could sing, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, perhaps. There, touch we now your garment's hem. The tune is called Union Seminary.
great. Well, I'm not going to go into the fugue because it is actually quite a hard one towards the end, at least. So I'm, I'll, I'll save that for another day. Well, I think J.S. Bach will have the final word today. I think um, a lot of people do play Bach as volunteers in, in Lent. I'm not quite sure why. But some people do. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining me tonight for Virtual Church. If you um, are watching on Catch Up and you've got this far, you've um, obviously seen the cats having all sorts of fun, which they are doing right now. If you're watching on Catch Up, uh, leave me a comment. Uh, let me know what you think. Even if you're chatting live, which a lot of you are still here. Um, um, Tony Brook, sorry, I didn't play the fugue. Maybe next time. Uh, if you are watching live, uh, look, 230 odd people, if you all left a comment on the video, that would be fantastic. Fanta I would love to see 230 comments on all of my videos. That'd be amazing. Um, I'm going to read, I read every single comment. I see who they're from and I read them all and I always give them a like. And if it's a, if it's a, a positive comment about my playing or something, I always give it a heart. So please do leave me comments. I love them. Um, so, I'm, I'm, I was in Llandaff this week, recording the cathedral organ. This week I'm going to another cathedral, and I will let you know where it is, where's Richie, once I'm there. I can't wait. It's one of my absolute favourite organs in this country. And when I get there, and when I put a picture of me in front of that organ console, or the organ case, Everyone who lives in this country, who is an organist, will know instantly where it is. And a lot of people will think, that's my favourite organ as well. And I'm recording it. And I can't wait. A lot of pressure to get it right. So I'm very nervous about it. I've been talking to the organist about where everything is laid out, where the pipes are, so I can record it in the best way. It's got a wonderful acoustic, and it is in... And a lot of people agree with this, it is in one of the finest cathedrals in the entire world. So, I better get it right. No pressure, Richard. We can do this. I'm gonna, of course, I'll take you on the entire journey. Um, so until then, I will now say cheerio. Good night, everyone. You take care. And of course, you stay safe. Oh! Josh Wilson has just said, the vote, the vote. We should have the vote. Quickly, what has been your favorite hymn tonight? I should have said as I played that bark, how foolish of me. I should have said, what was it? We should, maybe we should have it next week because I've forgotten to do it and now it's, the timing's all wrong. We'll do it next week, we will do it next week. Don't do it now, we'll do it next week. Josh, thank you for reminding me, but we'll do it next week. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. You take care. Yeah, and you know the rest. You stay safe. Bye-bye.